Thank you once again, viewers of Off the Pitch with TK. Um, we're back in studio. We, we're still with the uh, SAFU uh, topics. Um, today in studio, uh, once again, I'm with the president. But we also have a, a guest uh, who is the friend of the show, uh, Faya uh, Peter Kobani. Uh, but uh, let me follow protocol first before I welcome Faya. Uh, welcome my president once again. Um, president, thank you very much once again and welcome to Off the Pitch with TK. No, no, TK, thank you so very much. And I think you would not have done anything wrong by firstly welcoming this legend. Uh, yeah. Because these are the legends of the game. These are the people who made the game to be what it is. Yeah. And uh, we must always feel honored when we are in their presence. And uh, there can never be any honor to be mentioned. Yeah. Any honor better than being mentioned after them. Yeah. So if you mention me after them, I would be very, very happy. Okay, yeah. that's great. Um, let me welcome you, Fire. Fire, thank you very much uh, once again for coming through. Uh, in our last engagement, I did tell you that um, uh, this is not the one, so we don't do one that stands here. You, you come once, you will have a way. You will find your way back here, and uh, I welcome you. No, thanks, uh, TK. I'm really honored to be invited with the president. Yeah, you know, it's not everybody who can sit next to the president, so it's my honor today uh, to be with the president in the show. Correct, correct. Uh, look, uh, chance we, we we still continue with the the, the South role in in South African football, and I felt it's important that I also get a former player, a legend like yourself, uh, to be part of these discussions, because some of the things that they are addressing, you might have experienced them uh, uh, firsthand. Um, so I think the, 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 the first more, uh, important thing that I want us to look at is uh, SAPU is South African Football Players Union. There is, there is SA and F, which is South African Football. Then there is SAFA. What's the relationship between SAFA and, and SAPU? Maybe uh, I'll start with you, President, and then maybe Fire can also give his view of what he think uh, still can be better. Look, the relationship between us and uh, uh, the South African Football Association, it's a very clear one because SAFA, by definition, mm -hmm. and uh, what it ought to do is they are the authority of football in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, SAFA, to a large extent, uh, over and above administering football uh, it, uh, at the level of the national squad, it enlists the services of the people that we represent, who are the players. Our interest is to ensure that uh, there's, uh, the rights of those players mm. uh, are protected, both female and, uh, and male. Yeah. And this also includes that uh, all these uh, genders are able to play uh, football uh, they are able to play where there are proper resources, they are able to be developed properly, and so forth. So all these things mm -hmm. uh, that we wish for our members mm -hmm. are the things that must be implemented uh, by SAFA as it were. So SAFA as an authority of football mm -hmm. uh, has got that responsibility to ensure that football development uh, is uh, well taken care of and it f also form proper structures to enable better participation but it also goes to the issues of school sport where SAFA you know plays and it's responsible for so anything that has to do with that structurally mm -hmm. is the responsibility of SAFA and we do represent our players and we always forever have a view in terms of what we think is the role that SAFA has, uh, is playing, whether it's playing it accordingly or whether it's got its mistakes. And to mm. the extent that we are not happy, mm. we should have the right and we should be allowed, and in actual fact, we will, cont we will raise those issues that we are not uh, uh, happy with. So we just the vanguards of the rights of the players, as it were. We do have a cooperation agreement with SAFA, uh, which we've still been discussing quite a lot of, with them in terms of how do we then uh, 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 take forward our, our, our relationships. Yeah. yeah. And, and Fire, as a former player, 
between SAFA and SAPU, what's your view on their roles in terms of South African football development and players' lives uh, pre and post their playing days? Look, uh, I think um, uh, uh, the role of SAFA, like the president has included, uh, they need to make sure that football is run properly in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the relationship between SAFU and SAFA is so important that, you know, uh, the workers, the players who are playing the national team, those who are putting us in the ranks and all these things, yeah. they, they are represented by SAFU. So they, SAFU is the, is the mouthpiece of those players. So it becomes easy when SAFA and SAFU work hand in glove because mm -hmm. they will understand and know how far they uh, uh, are the players in terms of satisfaction or are they doing uh, things correctly? You know, it's not only about uh, complaints. Maybe they can be complimented uh, or maybe uh, staff can say, you know what, players are happy, players are wishing that you can keep the same momentum that you're having in terms of treatment. Yeah. You know, and like uh, uh, women's football, I mean, uh, uh, staff are the ones who know better mm. in terms of how uh, the players are feeling. Because staff is just administrating the, the, the league, but in terms of going down to the ground, mm. SAFPU is doing the ground work. Mm. So it, it, it would be if, if SAFA uses SAFPU as, as uh, uh, the soldiers, foot soldiers, mm. and bring the information back so that they know what to do. It, it would be very much easy. Yeah. So that, that's why I'm saying the, the relationship is very much important. Yeah. But based on what you observed to date from outside, before I get to Mr. President, has SAFA been SAFA? Maybe the president of SAFA been working well with SAFU, from what you've observed. Look, there's there's improvements because there, there were times there where SAFU is called when Bafana Bafana is playing, mm. they were able to talk to the players and all that. And before it was not happening, so I'm saying there's 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 an improvement. The mm. the, the door it's, it's a bit open. Even it's not wide open, but it's it's at least open. Mm. The voice can reach even if uh, 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 they can't fit in. But at one stage, uh, it was very difficult. The doors were locked, but now at least there's that communication. Mm. There's, there, there are meetings, mm. which is what is important. If there's a meeting, it means there's a progress. Yeah. Before you were denied meetings, but now you are given meetings. Mm. You know, so the, 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 the things that you, you, you are uh, complaining about, then they'll be attended because now you are able to sit in one table with uh, the people that were not giving you the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, a new leadership of SAFA uh, just uh, took over office a couple of weeks ago, 26 June or so, to be precise. The relationship between you as SAFU and the current SAFA president, I know one of the big concerns is that you wanted to have a meeting with him and it wasn't possible. You guys had your views before the Congress of SAFA. And how's, how are you feeling now after the the elections. TK, the, you're quite correct in saying we would have wanted to have uh, met with the president. Unfortunately, we were denied that opportunity. Uh, by who? Uh, by the president, I would put it that way, or by SAFA because he represents SAFA. But we spoke directly. I can tell you that we've got direct line to the president. I mm. can call the president any time we talk. Fai is quite correct in saying uh, the relations have improved in terms of having discussions and all that. But I always believe that the discussions must not be based on what we want, what is it that we want to discuss or what the, what's the topic mm. uh, under discussion in this sense. It must not be based on whether you love the, 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 the topic that we want to discuss or you hate it. Mm. If the topic is for you, then you agree to talk. But if it's not for you, at least you believe that it's something that, you don't, that doesn't resonate well with you, then you don't want to have a discussion. Would have wanted to discuss with the president the vision 2022. Mm. Uh, because we, we don't look at president and say, president, we don't like you because uh, you have a certain color. Mm. You, are, you are lighter than I am. No, mm. that's not how we, we, we look at a person. We wanted to take his vision 2022, sit with him on the table and say, 
President, there are quite a number of things that we think have not been achieved. Mm. There's a whole lot of what we believe is corruption in the ABC, Motsipe, this and that is not happening. You mm. know. Uh, President, we don't think that women football is in the uh, right, is taking a right uh, direction or so. We don't think that male football, we don't think the infrastructure is proper at the level of stuff. We don't think you are really producing what we want. Mm. Let us sit down. And President, we think you are old. Mm. Uh, we think uh, at this age you're supposed to have sat down and say, what kind of the administration do you want to leave us? You know, mm. so that when you talk of your third term, mm. we must know exactly what you are referring to. So we wanted to engage yeah. with the president on those particular uh, matters. President, the country does not have a full-time technical director. Mm. We know that there's a process around the technical director, the person that has been appointed. Mm. Why has this appointment not been pronounced? Mm. What's stopping all this? President, we think uh, the, uh, 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 the national executive uh, of SAFA is bloated. We, need, we think it needs to be reduced. Mm. So these are some of the discussions we would have wanted to discuss with him going into Congress so that you know, we have his confidence and so forth. Like I said earlier, the president has promised to, when he comes back, he will have a discussion with ourselves. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I wish I could just speak to him through you now and tell him exactly what we want to raise those issues. Yeah. But he had said to us, when he comes back, he will give us an opportunity to raise these issues that we are raising with him. Mm. But I'm highlighting and flagging these issues that this is what we will be discussing with him. And after those discussions, when he comes back, whether they happen or they don't, mm. we'll come back and say to you, TK, we have uh, uh, raised these issues with the president. Mm. This is our views, and this is what he would have said. Or, TK, we could not meet with the president, and these are the issues that we wanted to flag, mm. and we raised them on this particular basis. But we are on record mm. on the issues of the technical direct to say, Part of the problems that we are sitting with uh, in this country, it's separation of powers. You have, when you look at the roles and responsibility of the technical director, you get to realize that the technical director's role mm. is to ensure that the very same thing that you have raised by in terms of the development, it is there. They must get the resources to do uh, this. By the way, Mm. When you look at the vision, uh, vision uh, 2022, yeah. it's got like about eight cardinal points. One of them is for them to be financially independent, women development, uh, have uh, about, what, 10,000 coaches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it talks about the, in actual fact, not even 10,000 coaches, but it talks about the kind of football that South Africa ought to be playing and, 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 and all these things. Yeah. So it's got all these things there. And these are the discussions that we wanted to have. But for us, fundamental to this is the role of the technical director. Because you'd find that sometimes there's, a, there's no separation of power in terms of what the president must do, what the CEO mm -hmm. must do, and the uh, technical director must yeah. do in terms of that. In terms of that uh, cardinal point, he says, each region will have two... Uh, a technical director. So you have a technical director, you've got the region to implement all these structures. We mm. need to have your under 15, we need to have your under 17 and all that. But the person who must make sure that there is this implementation is this. What becomes the responsibility because the South African Masters Legend and, uh, you know, Football Association with, uh, 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 with, uh, with, with SAFA, how do you relate? What do you do there? It is that body uh, I mean, it is that uh, uh, body, not the, that office, yeah. or the technical director that has to be responsible for that. So these are some of the things that we want to discuss with him. Do we think we are happy? I'm not going to say to you I'm happy with uh, uh, him being there. If you ask me what am I happy about, I'm not too sure what is it that I'm happy about mm. because I'm not too sure what is it that he's going to do different this time around. What we know is that there is this uh, corruption that we see 
over and over again at the ABC where referees, we are told results are decided this, and wait until mm. somebody is killed. It's mm. very soon that there were going to be death at those, uh, especially when it comes to issues of playoffs and, and stuff and all that, because now it would appear that a lot of people who would go through, mm. you know, all those stages are not necessarily people who ought to be going through. Mm. Everybody who's got a few cents, then they are then able to uh, to make their way uh, up. If the intel that we have at this particular point and the things that we have at this point mm. is anything to go by, it tells you that there's a whole lot of work that needs to be done for us to achieve that. But we're hoping that we'll be able to meet. We're hoping that uh, uh, this is... Uh, nothing. We are not going to be personal about these things, yep. but we're going to be uh, uh, be dealing with these issues from the organizational point of view. But because we are lovers of football and we are lovers of South Africa, we'll be able to meet up with the president and say, as Safa and Safu, this is our rules. This is what we believe ought to happen and how to channel uh, all the things that we need to channel for the betterment of the development of the game. Yeah. Did you have an opportunity to, to see his manifesto before elections? Because I, I don't remember uh, seeing or hearing his manifesto or campaign. I had Mamria's plan and she was out there to say I'm campaigning this my manifesto. Did we get to go through the president's manifesto in terms of what are his plans now coming into the office? I can tell you that we had a meeting with uh, Soli Mushabin. Mm -hmm. He explained to us who was one of the candidates. Yeah. He told us what he wanted to do. We expressed an issue around, uh, for an example, in terms of the uh, youth, you know, mm -hmm. uh, especially given the age of the president as well, to say what is it that we, we want to achieve? Are we basing this thing only on the issues of age? We said no, but we had a very interesting discussion in terms of this manifesto, where he wants to take as South African football, what is it that you want to do? You yeah. can, at some point, I think you must also have a discussion with him, especially with what he does in Pretoria, Twani, yeah. as Twani is the president, yeah. because the in Twani, he's done and he's put proper structures, what needs to happen and what, and it's like he's building an oil machine. We had a meeting with Mamre, mm -hmm. you know, uh, she told us exactly what she wanted to do, how she was going to run, what is it that she needed to do. I mean, one of the things, excuse me, which we strongly believed with her was around the issues of resources to say in terms of this infrastructure, we know that uh, there's monies that municipalities receive, receive mm. on behalf of uh, LFA. LFAs. But yeah. there's those monies are responsible, those monies like they need to be geared towards the development of football or infrastructure and so forth. So you need to have a relationship. Mm. Municipalities are responsible for those grounds and all that. Mm. Now, as Safa, you need to deal and work with 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 uh, uh, the locals to see how you deal with with those issues. We've agreed on the issue of development, but we've also said to her one of the things that we want to do is to put a proper uh, capable in uh, uh, administrative structure. Mm. If we are not going just to put a one person and say, okay, you have a CEO who's a young man, but everybody else around them. Mm. Uh, is you've got an aging infrastructure in terms of the manpower and so forth, but these yeah. people are not going to be here long term. So we had the discussion. We know the short term and long term. Yeah. We can't say the same about the president. Mm. We can't talk about any other things. He would have sent me uh, the uh, document that would have been prepared, of course, uh, for uh, the... I think it was presented at Parliament at some point in terms of how far football is, what's happening, and this, that, and then the app. But I've not had the opportunity, or as SAF, on behalf of SAF, we haven't had the opportunity to sit down and interrogate uh, what he had to say. This is where we are and yeah. stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very unfortunate, but we're hoping that uh, that will change. The meeting and, will, uh, will, the meeting will, will take something. place will be able to unlock those discussions yeah. and hear exactly what's happening. Maybe we've got, uh, you see, if you don't have any information sometimes, uh, you'll find that uh, our thinking, uh, it's, uh, it's misplaced. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he's got a very uh, uh, good plan, uh, good plan yeah. coming up. Yeah. 
Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> uh, so we can only know once we've had the meeting with him. And I'm hoping that TK, within two weeks, this meeting would have taken place. Yeah. And uh, you will come back and, report. and sit and report you know, okay. to the uh, stakeholders, everybody who is a listener of this show, say this is where we are. And we will tell it the way it is, uh, whether we've agreed on things, those that we have agreed on, those that we didn't agree on. Yeah. So we'll talk about it. We'll also discuss with him on the issue of the uh, Super League and their views and stuff and all that. Because yeah. it's very important that yeah. we have those discussions. Yeah. Fire, let, let me come back to you on the issue of Safa. I don't know if you believe Safa, the regime that just went out, vis the one that is coming in, is the same president, of course. Do you believe they've done well? If not, why President Denis Jordan won with so much votes compared to this, his two competitors? Uh, TK, uh, you can't do the same thing time and time again and expect different results. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I can't say they did well. Even the president of SAFA, if he wants to be thoughtful, he can say that I did not achieve Vision 2022. Mm -hmm. It's not me. It's what he said he will do, and he didn't do. I don't know what you call that, failure or success. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the judge. But for me, he did not achieve that. So uh, like the president has just said, uh, maybe he's got something, uh, a trump card in the pocket that we, we were not even aware of. But I, I, I just hope and wish that uh, the mentality changes this time around. And you can't do things alone. Like, in terms of uh, uh, the, the division or the, the sharing of powers, I mean, we need technical director in, in, in that office so that we can move. We can't move as a, as, a, as a country in terms of football without having a, 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 so a special position that's not filled for, for years, mm. you know. So I think if we can divide powers, if we can engage people, if we can engage those uh, uh, organizations that are in football, uh, then we're building South Africa. We're not building individuals here. Mm. So I think it's about time that people know that if you are the leader of a certain organization, you, you don't lead your family, you don't lead yourself, you're leading other people. Yeah. So I think uh, 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 it's high time that everybody who is in superior uh, uh, seats, mm. they, they understand why are they there. They are uh, uh, the, the, like postmen. They are not there to make uh, 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 things happen. They are told what to do and they must just follow what the, the masses are saying. Mm. Things will be very much simple. Power must be vested on the followers, not on the president. But what makes this guy win with so much votes? That's my concern to say, it's, is it the people that are surrounding him that makes him emerge? Or, or, where is it? Is it the work that he does? Because we can't keep, or people can't keep putting you in power if they don't believe in you. But the feeling is that he's, he's failing. You mentioned version, version 2022, he has failed to deliver. But they put him back in office. Yes, I think they are not uh, charging him with uh, 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 the work that he has done. Mm. They are using another method that we are not aware of. Because if they were very serious in terms of developing football and all this, they could have looked at what he said he would do. If he did, then give him the vote. If he didn't, Mm. Don't, but I, I think they are they are using something else to measure his pe uh, performance yeah. uh, that we are not aware of. Mm. So it's it, it it becomes very difficult for uh, people like us who are sitting at home and watching things happen happen. You know, so I it's very difficult. They they know that he didn't succeed. Maybe they saw the manifesto mm. for the the third term. And we didn't see. Maybe it's that manifesto that made them uh, uh, vote him back again. You never know. Look, uh, Fire is quite correct, uh, TK, in that you would never know. Mm. I mean, if, let me just take a step back. If indeed people were judged based on the work that they do, I think certain would have uh, uh, retired, resigned right now. Mm. The country we've got, I mean, we've just been hit by load shedding now, mm. you know, and, and we're not allowed to talk about that, that the country is going to the docks, 
mm. if it's not gone there already. We're not allowed to talk about the failures mm. of this current government. And maybe it's because they've got a, a proper missionary in terms of their uh, PR exercise to say what is it that they do, what is this, the information that they put out there, you know. But again, the question is, in which pond are they playing? Are they playing in the space that's proper? If you take Safa's uh, approach and you take it just a, a few steps, steps back again is that Safa started with a, a, a constitutional congress. Mm. If you remember, before the congress, there yeah. was a congress that had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And the decision was based on the issues of statutes to say who is likely to stand, who is not uh, likely to stand. Yeah. Then they make decisions, they agreed in terms of what needs to happen and so forth. Uh, be as it may, maybe they followed the proper processes and uh, one of those part was to bar people from uh, uh, campaigning and, and people could not even reach that level of campaign. Yeah. But you also knew the people that are going to vote, where to go and so forth. So it's been a very difficult uh, process for whoever who wanted to be part and parcel of these uh, particular structures. The question that we must ask is to maybe the prop the uh, congress those who would have elected or the national executive committee mm. and check whether they're happy with the way that has been done maybe this question would be better placed or be better answered by them to mm. say do you think in all honesty the president has done very well mm. and i can tell you that uh, behind cameras a lot of them would say to you no we don't think so yeah uh, but behind cameras they will tell you uh, and why they think he doesn't deserve. Yeah. But in front of cameras, they'll tell you totally a different story. Mm. That's the challenge that we are faced with as a country. But I think we must not lose hope mm. in our view. We must continue to engage. We must go back to those very same structures that would have appointed the president and try and find a way of engaging with those particular structures and become part and parcel of structures. One of the downfall uh, is that we walk away. You see, after like this, everybody mm. disengages. Mm. Uh, they are going to wait for another four years. And the four years come and we want to engage again and say, let us do the work and so forth. The question is, what needs to be done? Yeah. Why should we not then sit down and say, we? Let's look at the implementation. What is it that needs to be done? But the problem again is, if we say you're going to hold somebody to account, you're going to hold them to account on what? Because we have not even seen that particular manifesto that says for the next coming term, this is, what this is it. And this is what we are seeing. We are giving uh, the president, of course, that opportunity to at least, you know, to have engage, to engage with him to say, President, you are here now. You are the president of uh, SAFA. Mm. For the next coming four years, what are you doing? Mm. What are you bringing for us? And he's able to deal with this particular matter. Why he's been voted again it would be those people who have voted, who believe that he has done the work. Yeah. They are the people who can answer that question better. We cannot say much because we might be holding a different view in terms of what we believe has been done. But going forward, we believe that the, we need somebody who's going to unify uh, a food, football and it's uh, the people or all stakeholders within the game. We, you have former players mm. whose role we don't really understand in mm. the big scheme of things. We have spoken about the issue of the TD which we believe uh, has to be attended as a matter of agency. We spoken about the issue of women development at local level, the leagues, to say how do we then get uh, that we need to try and approve the what we call the corruption at the level of ABC. How do we deal with that uh, issue so that everything else, uh, the people who deserve to go, you know, forth are able to do that? Maybe it's time as well that we reduce the number of the National Executive Committee. If we reduce that number, because I think it's about 42 people, mm. that uh, is, the, is, the, is the biggest uh, number in the world of the national executive yeah. so when you have got 52 people and 42 are guaranteed positions 
then there's always going to be an issue of the problem. So we want that part. We want to sit down. We want to interrogate all other matters and documents so that we deal with the actuals and so forth. But we're hoping that uh, we still believe in the future of football in this country. We strongly believe that a lot can be changed, mm. uh, but we'll hear exactly what his uh, plans are uh, going forward, and, and we'll take it from there. But we'll continue engaging with other stakeholders as well, uh, uh, your legends, your coaches, uh, yeah. other administrators, We'll go to the LFAs, we'll go to the regions, so that we are then able to sit down and say, how do we then, all of us, uh, work towards uh, the achieving the goal that we all need to? Yeah. So, uh, uh, fire one thing that after the elections, I think I heard Coach Six Mashaba in one of the media briefings. Uh, I don't know if he was speaking, but he was backed by legends. There were legends behind him. I'd like to believe he was speaking with him or on behalf of the legends that Danny won't finish his term. Is it possible? Is there measures to say vote of no confidence if there is such to say he can't finish his term or it's just a wishful thinking? Look, uh, it's a very difficult one to, to answer yeah. uh, because I think uh, Brashek should have elaborated more, yeah. given us like few indications, you mm. know, but it's, uh, uh, again, the same uh, uh, answer I gave you with the people who voted uh, uh, Danny in. He, only him knows. He, he might have something that he has picked up, maybe on the constitution of Safa, mm. and he knows that he can push it uh, to the highest court in the world, and he knows that he is going to win. So it's, it's a catch-22 situation for me to say he was right or he was wrong. But... I would, I would think already. he knows. He's been the national coach for a very long time. Yeah. So he knows the ins and outs of, of, of Safa and he knows yeah. the constitution uh, well enough to have said what he has said. Mm. So I'm just watching the space and hoping to see uh, what will be the ultimate end. Yeah, and, and how's the relationship with you as the legends and Safa? In this NEC, are you having representatives? You know, it's it's... Also very difficult, like yeah. the, uh, uh, the president has just said. Uh, there's no unity in South African football. Mm. As much as um, uh, South African masters and legends, whatever, there's mm. no uh, like coalition. Yeah. There's no working together. Mm. There's another group calling themselves this. There's another group calling themselves that. And if you check, they all have played football. Mm. So you wonder why are these guys not coming together? Yeah. Because uh, football, it's a team. The, these ones are, are players. Mm. It, it's, it's, a, it's a team sport. Though they should have... It was supposed to be easy for them mm. to get into a uh, 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 you know, hit, hit Safa back, but it's difficult. They are giving them a, a, a leeway or a chance to escape. Because they will always say, no, no, you are saying you are this. There's other, others who are calling themselves that. And in that department, I think uh, SAFPU should intervene, call these uh, groups, sit them together and say, guys, you want one thing and you are not, it, it's not for you. You know, the, the problem with people is we are fighting for us. It's not for us. It's for the future. It's mm. for the country. Mm. The same thing with the president. Mm. They should know that they are not doing it for themselves. They are doing it for the country and for the future. Mm. So if these people can also understand that, okay, we are all former footballers, let's sit down and fix the country for the future, mm. not for now. It will be very much important, but if you want to be in a position, that's where the problem is. Now yeah. there will be fights and all this and misunderstandings. And you, you, you need to forget that you were better than me in our playing days. Mm. We are now back together at yeah. the same level. Mm. Now we should flow together. I think that's, that's, that's what beats a... Uh, 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 the former players. So, in a nutshell, you former players, you are, you are disorganized yourselves. We are very much disorganized. And I wish, you know, we, we can understand why are we fighting. Because, yes, we are fighting, but people don't understand what... Some of uh, uh, the people, they don't understand what we're fighting for. Hmm. We're fighting for different things. Others are fighting for possessions. Others are fighting for a, a better life uh, after football. Hmm. You know, so that's where the problem is. People are power mongers. I mean, I see 
Well, that is the problem. If everybody can forget about position mm. and focus, you know, and you, 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 you also must listen. Sometimes you must listen. You can't talk the whole time. Yeah. Sometimes you must listen when people are talking. Mm. Then at least you will grow. How are you going to grow? How are you going to know what I need or what I want if you don't listen to me? Yeah. So people must just listen. Sit down and listen. We can go far. Mm. This is a simple thing. And we must not be emotional because, you know, this thing of legends, masters, whatever. We are masters and legends in our di uh, different ways. You can be administratively, you can be a master or a legend. Mm. And this one can be a master or a legend in terms of play. Mm. So, you know, so we, we must sit down and, and, and listen. I think this thing can, can be solved in, in, in two minutes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, uh, there is a belief that if a former player becomes a suffer president, like we see with Cameroon and Edu, maybe it will be better because he understands the challenges and what needs to be done in football. I don't know if him being a president or having a technical director, but I think in the past Neil Toby was a technical director. But I believe the way SAFA has structured the elections or the nominations, it says you must have been in LFAs, you must be in structures, regional and all that. Isn't that a way of blocking these former players to occupy the position? And is there something that can be done to change that rule to say, let it not apply, let's look at a new angle of appointing a SAFA president? So you know that at CAF level we have uh, Patrice Mutzip, mm. who is the president of CAF. Mm. And Patrice hasn't... Uh, at any given point, was he not a member uh, of the NEC, NEC of CAF yeah. when he was appointed to be the president? Of yes. CAF. They had to change something to allow for Patrice to come mm. in as the president because they believe that one of the things they needed to do, especially as a block, Kosafa, mm. was to make sure that they have somebody who's got uh, the know how, who's got uh, at least they will be able to assist financially and so forth. And that's how Patrice ended up being a president. Mm. Now, I'm saying then Safa went to Congress to deal with statues. Mm. Part of that was to ensure that they close out everybody who wanted to become the president. You would know that the Battle of Safa and the League Star, I mean, it's, it's well documented. One of the things was to bar anybody that owns a professional team to become the president of SAFA. So it's not only about uh, former, former players. players. Yeah. It's been about the, the way they would say, when you are in, you can, as, 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 a, as a, a president or as a chairman of a club, of a professional club, you're only eligible to become a first a second a fourth or a third uh, deputy president so mm. you can only become a, a second or a third deputy president that's what it says that was taken at congress okay and congress has the power to take that the pro congress convened and after that they take they took that decision mm. to say this is it can this be changed yes this can be changed but what do we need to do tk we need to all of us come together. We must l look at uh, whether there is there an opportunity to serve at the local associations, you know, the, the, the LFAs. Mm. If we are able to get there, then how do we then go, go moving, going up? Mm. Because once you miss the bus there, you may not be able to get into this space where decisions are made. Yeah. We, let's take for an example, mm -hmm. uh, Mamria's campaign mm. was magnificent when you talk about the support that she received from different national uh, non-governmental organizations. Mm. It was huge. Everybody uh, you know, supported this, that and that. But those were non-voters. Yeah. Those are people who were not going to vote. Unless, of course, where, where the question that you asked earlier on, unless, of course, uh, SAFA is uh, their, their approach is to make sure that they do not operate and stuff and all that, I don't see how they are going to be removed. Unless if they've got 
uh, that silver bullet that uh, Fire talks about, that they saw something in the constitution and yeah. stuff. But they tried mm. going through the constitution to say they are the issues that needs to be done and nothing was, uh, was really done. Now, our view it's, uh, it's this. Mm -hmm. We think there must be proper discussions mm -hmm. by all uh, stakeholders consent mm. to say what is it that we really need to see and what is it that we want to achieve uh, uh, going forward. But we must continue having the discussions. But ours, ourselves, as former players, we must also empower ourselves. We must have the know-how. What is it that we want? We cannot just be talking a, a TK without necessarily putting some work. Mm. We need to put some work because that's the only way we are going to achieve some of the things that we need to do. Without that, the, just the face to say, I was famous, I am famous, I know this, is not going to get you anywhere, it's not going to get any points. Yeah. Would that change uh, if we were to have a, a former footballer being the president? Would it change? I do not know, because you need to change the structure. Mm -hmm. The reality of the matter is, the National Executive uh, Committee is the highest decision-making structure between Congresses of South. Now, those are the people who currently would have voted uh, Mr. Jordan yes. into, into power. Wow. Now, whether you remove him and you become president, you still have this structure that you still need to sit with and yeah. be able to convince this structure that you need to work with them. But mm. how do you then take power away from that structure? It's something that you need to sit down and say, let us agree. Probably, you would then need a, a minister, which does not necessarily have to interfere, because FIFA always talk about interference. Mm. But to the extent that you are able to sit down and say, no, wait a minute, there would have been some uh, uh, things which are uh, not necessarily uh, correct. Or you then say, let us sit down and let me facilitate dialogue Mm. between these people so that we are then able to find a solution. That's what you need. But the kind of minister that we have is not the one that's going to give us that. I would have seen that uh, firsthand, would have observed them firsthand, especially during the issues of COVID uh, return to protocol, uh, uh, return to play protocol. So it, it, it becomes a bit of a challenge. So I think we must go on let us uh, get into those uh, structures that are relevant structures within SAFA and be able to influence decision as it were. Yeah. Mm. Fire, I don't know if you've got anything to add on this uh, SAFA topic before maybe we move to another topic. No, no. I, I, I think that the problem is really not up there. Mm. It's, it's in the regions. Mm. It's in the elephants where uh, most of us are staying. So the president is rightfully saying that we must also go there because that's where uh, uh, the votes are or the voters are. So if, if we go and influence the, the people on the ground, I think the, the, their mentality will change be, be, because we will show them the importance mm. of change or why are they need to do this and that. We are not just going to say to them, do this, I'll give you that. We, we will show them what, the, the, what, is, what is the future hold for the country. Mm. You know, but if, if we don't do that, if we don't go to, uh, the, to the ground, to the regions, we are still not going to be happy at last. Because why is quite correct. You can't just emerge on the eve of uh, Congress mm. and say, no, we are going to go and vote for us. We, you need to go and do the work. You yeah. need to go and infiltrate wherever you need to. You need to do the work. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know that sometimes we just appear, oh, I've got... Uh, a secret, by uh, uh, the secret player. Yeah. Yeah. It's a secret player. Okay, you. Know, this is the. No, it doesn't work out in real life. Yeah. So in real life, you must go do the work with uh, LFA, engage with people, and you probably do that. If you win uh, KZN, for an example, I think it's KZN, whether it's East, I think it's them Cape and KZN, they've got. Huge numbers. Mm -hmm. When you have those two, then you're then done. You're good. Then you're done. Then you're done. So you really need to know exactly what is it that you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that's where yeah it is.
And I think the other thing is uh, nobody will vote for somebody that they don't know. Yeah. yeah. You know, they might know you, but they don't know you. Because you need to make friendship. You need to win trust. Mm. You need to build trust with these people. They need to know who, who are you, why are they going to vote for you, what is it that you want to do. And they need to also have inputs in whatever manifesto you are going to give to uh, the whole country. But now if you just come on the 11th hour, it's, it becomes very difficult. Yeah. It, it means we, we, we want to win uh, without giving any effort. Mm. So we must start now. It needs to take you four or ten years for you, can become, for you to become something. But it's not going to happen in, in two months, mm. in one month. It is very difficult. So if you really, really want to be the, the leader of, you really, really want to have change, mm. you, you must start now. You must sweat. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's not a child's play. It's very difficult down there. Yeah. So if you have to go up there, then you know what to do. Because you need to start here from the scratch so that you know what to do when you are here. Yeah. And the people who are on the ground must also uh, know that, oh, this is TK. This is the guy who came to us last week. Mm. You, they are not going to say this is the guy who came to us that day he wanted us to vote, then he finished. Yeah. That, that, that's the only thing and the only way. Yeah, no, it's, it seems a bit complex, and I think they've, they've built a structure in a way that it's not going to be easy to break it. Because if the same NEC are the one that believes in the current regime, and they're the one who's voting powers, anybody else can make noise from outside. But come voting time, you're just a noise maker, you don't have voting powers. But for you to have voting powers, you must start with LFA, and that is time you must build until regional and all the way up. So I think it's still going to be very difficult. Strategy informs tactics. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, we, it is that we don't want to pay our, uh, our school, school fees. fees. Yeah. We need to pay yeah. our school fees. We need to go out there. It's, uh, it's not easy paying school fees. It's mm. not easy waking up in a one winter morning, holy snow, only bargain, more Yeah. Ice uh, on the grass. Yeah. But it's gilly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not easy. You know that hey, Slavsaka start with the mall, but you need to do it. Mm -hmm. Because you know that you've seen that uh, uh, shoe somewhere. But for you to get there, you must first or had to, to get the other one. But we don't want to do that. We, I think one of the challenges is uh, immediate gratification that we all are about and what, what we want. But I, I'm hoping that uh, things will change for the better. Uh, we can't say everything is wrong about Safa, that it would not be true. Mm -hmm. uh, but equally so, there are a lot of things that are not right about the organization. And just moving one person is not going to change that. Uh, we need to look at it and find the structure. But maybe it becomes the beginning, the, the port. But I like this point that says uh, we must start Kofati for Come us uh, yeah. to go up and be able to deal with uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, let, let's come to PSL yeah, issues or relationship. I, I, I believe you, you, you have some agreement with PSL, you are working well together, but I still believe maybe there are issues. Um, what do you think of the current standard of PSL? Commercial wise, I think from fight looks good. Development wise, are the players' lives improving under this current PSL? Or is the money for the PSL but not for the players? Look, I think there's been a lot of improvement, especially with regards to the uh, uh, what the players were were getting. You know, uh, I think there's a lot of improvement. However, this improvement is not that kind of improvement that will take you uh, to the other uh, for you to retire uh, handsome. And to that, I think there are a number of things, and there are a number of factors. The sponsor by DSTV has done very well, mm. you know, uh, because they are especially, uh, when you look at the uh, PSL, even though the gap keeps on widening between the PSL and the National First Division, because mm. when you get the players, you know that you get about 2.5 players, at least are guaranteed grants. Mm. Uh, clubs are guaranteed that they will get grants, they can work with something. You also have NFT that has got uh, the grants. Uh, these at least, 
players are going to get uh, something, as opposed to before when there was there were no grants at all. Yeah, you know, to pay that. Are these grants enough? Not at all. Mm. They're not really uh, 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 grants. Uh, they would have raised the issues of. Um, The, they would have raised the issues around, um, you know, COVID, because everybody was telling about COVID this, COVID that, COVID this, COVID that. But this goes beyond, you know, issues. Even they go pre-COVID, mm. you know, where you would have challenges. But here are the things that we think need to happen and they need to be addressed so that the, we have a solution in terms of how to deal with matters of football. Yeah. And I keep on bringing the government in this space because government becomes a very important uh, stakeholder in ensuring that there is uh, more money within the kitty that we can work with. Mm. And uh, one of those things is that when you look at sponsorship, mm. sponsorship is still white. Mm. Sponsorship, there's no, the level of sponsorship, you can go from 97 when Trevor Phillips was here to today, you'll see that the sponsorship is still, and compare football and rugby and cricket mm. from that period, 97 to today. Yeah. See how much is in the cricket kit and rugby kit and football kit. Mm. I always say I would rather fight with the league 400 million in a kit Mm. that we say, how do we share this money? Mm. But you then have, uh, rather than fighting for uh, three million, that is in a kit because nobody's going to get anything. Now, if we address this issue of sponsorship, mm. we'll then be able to have more money in the game. And that more money, we can then start fighting with the league properly uh, to say, no, the players deserve a chunk and this is how much the player ought to, ought to have for them to get what they need to do. Now, that's the first part of sponsorship, but this is where government must come in. Mm. Where government must go and identify to say, okay, you have this, in terms of taxes, this is what you can do and be able to, to pay. I mean, a typical example is that the league has been struggling uh, in the main about with uh, getting a sponsorship. You get a sponsorship from another person of the league. Mm. We can talk about that sponsorship, how it came about. We may not know the details. We may only speculate how it came about. Mm. But all we're saying is you have that sponsorship. There is not any other sponsor that's going to uh, get to this level to assist. Mm. But the very same people that are going to be able to make money so the players would always be saying, okay, maybe we are going to get about 1.2 million. Mm. So if it's 1.2 million, we are guaranteed maybe 10,000 every month mm. as a player. You may not necessarily be getting the 10,000, but that doesn't mean that it's good money because the issues of inflation are not affected in, yeah. in that space. Mm. Now, it becomes very difficult for you to understand whether there's been an improvement in that. But there is also issue of tax. Mm. where players are taxed a lot of money, mm. which we saying players must not be taxed a lot of money. Mm. If you are taxed uh, in the period of 10 years playing football, you are taxed at 30%. 30 mm. Government must at least tax you 20% mm. and take the 10%, put it in a kitty. That's your retirement money, but the government can still have access to that money because we believe that actuarial scientists can be able to work something uh, good for us. We've had, we've got an arrangement, of course, with uh, with uh, uh, University of Johannesburg in terms mm. of them helping us, you know, in terms of the research, doing all that. Mm. That this is doable. We have spoken with Treasure. They said this is doable. Mm. But the issue is the willpower. Do we have a political power for for them to uh, implement. just implement this particular thing? Because when you want to talk about them, they tell you that. No, there are a lot of seasonal workers at this, and we tell them, no, this is a total different space where you talk of seasonal workers. Mm. Because now they want to uh, talk about garbage collectors, about this. We must say, no, that's not where we are. This is where we are, and this is what we know. 
we talked in about and so forth. So our view is that as much as there is that improvement, that little improvement, we strongly believe that a lot still needs to be done and there's a whole lot of things that can be done for us to address those particular issues and, and shortfalls. Mm. Now, if you address that issue of sponsorship, if you address the issue of uh, tax, you are taking at least something back to the players to say, this is where you are going to go and this is how you can deal with issues. But government needs to provide. How many clubs have been sold? Yeah. Which becomes a bit of a problem because you sitting with a situation where uh, today uh, Fire has a club, Fire FC. Uh, he plays, he plays, he plays, uh, and he plays with these players, uh, which is very unfortunate. And this is where the issue of exploitation comes in. Mm. He plays, there is no uh, financial regulations within the, uh, the leagues, you know, because it's not a requirement, and this and that. Now he plays, uh, his team is not doing his struggles for relegation or he wins promotion. Once he wins promotion, they say, you know, the PSL uh, status, it's about 18 million. Mm. He checks. He has spent about 10 million for me to be here. Mm. He gets that he sells that. Mm. No consideration whatsoever of the employers, of the employees. Yes, yeah. And no consideration and it gets that it goes. Those people are going to be far off. But nothing really protects them. Mm. Nothing says to you, no, these players are here, these players are going to, when they, uh, these contracts come to an end, it's going to happen. And sometimes, rightfully so, the contracts would have ended mm. because you only have one season. And mm. one season to you to the, that season takes you to the Premier Soccer League. Mm. So in actual fact, this club, it's not legally, they are not bound by anything to force you to sign and renew with these uh, 15 players. Mm. And all you do is that, okay, thank you, bye. Nothing uh, cuts against that. So it's a very difficult space sometimes to operate in TK. Mm. It's a very difficult space to say, this we can assure you of this. We can make sure that this is going to be implemented. But we think at some point we would have to look and say how does that work in terms of financial play and maybe the this goes also to the contracts that the players sign mm. you know when we sign mm. as players we are signed and we are happy but uh, we don't even sign and say should we gain promotion this is what i'm going to get yeah and you have uh, that and that becomes the role of the agent mostly mm. because once they sign those contracts the there is that a clause yeah. uh, to say once we get promotion this contract instead of me getting 10,000 I will get so much so they will frustrate you until uh, sometimes you like you know what yeah. I don't want anything to do with football but I think yes lives of players uh, yeah. to a large extent they have changed, they have changed. Uh, but they, uh, it's not the lives where you are going to say we'll then be able to sustain my life uh, the unfortunate part is that most mostly even now mm. uh, if your contract is going to end at the end of july comes to an end at the end of july mm. uh, the july salary could be your last uh, money that you would ever receive mm. so once the july salary fell you are back to from so august safe. you are no uh, income person no no income you are dead you are you are gone you, are yeah. gone. you don't have anything in your pockets yeah uh, thanks, President. I think we'll, we'll also need to deep dive on the club sales because it happened a lot in South Africa and I know it comes with challenges that some of you guys have dealt with them. Uh, you'll just give us a feedback in one of the sessions how you dealt with them. Uh, via the PSL, you played during the castle time and um, when you check the money then and the money now, the players' lives then and now, pre and post, is there an improvement? Uh, not really, not really, because I was reading an article where Mike Mangina was saying when he was playing for Chiefs, he was earning 9,000. Mm -hmm. And not long time ago, somebody was earning 5,000. Mm. I mean, where is the improvement in there? You know, there's there's few issues that I think if they can be addressed, mm. uh, players will live a, a better life. Number mm. one, it's the issue of uh, minimum wage. Mm. 
if that can be dealt with. Number two, it's uh, the issue of insurance of the players. Mm. When you are uh, injured, you got a permanent injury. How do we then deal with it? The president should know about it. It's not fair. Mm. You know, and uh, uh, the, the, the other thing is the image and the TV rights of mm. the players. If those three things can be fixed, mm. then the lives of the players in terms of finances will definitely change. Fire raises important issues. Mm. Um, and these are principal matters. Yeah. You know, the issues of minimum wage, it's very, very critical. Mm. We've had a discussion with this, and we know the minimum wage mm. within the league. Mm. The players, I mean, you'd have, want to have 25,000 take home uh, mm. in the minimum wage, minimum wage with, I mean, overall, with what we want to have in the National First Division. Mm. Uh, but that also must go with the schooling of mm. the clubs. Mm -hmm. Because I can promise you, TK, uh, this without, I uh, mean, for free, because I've, we've worked with these club bosses forever. Yeah. If tomorrow we agree and say the minimum wage in the Premier Soccer League must be 18,000, for an example, mm. they are going to pay 18,000 from uh, whatever he was getting. Mm. And they might say to him, but this is what we were. Uh, your organization said we must give you 18,000. Yeah. <laughs> and it's minimum wage. It's, it's, it's minimum. Minimum is minimum. Mm. So, so, are, you so saying, must... are you saying if you implement that clause, if, if fire was earning 25, they can drop him to 18? It's minimum wage. Mm. It's, uh, it's up to him. We can, we can have legal issues. You can around it to say no, but you can't lower my money uh, to 18. What? Why would you take an issue uh, because legally these people within the law, if they are, if they are paying you 18,000, if yeah. you move from one club, they give you 19,000. Mm. If you go to the other one, you move to that. I'm saying it's a very complex and a difficult thing to have a discussion and we really need to do that. But fundamentally, mm. and I fully agree mm. that we need to have that minimum wage. And it's been, but we it's... need to have the minimum wage also with all those other factors taking into consideration to say you have uh, the monies that has to go to the players. I mean, mm -hmm. the issues of the image rights, you yeah. say, you do have this, what happens? What is the education of the players and what is the understanding of what an image right is? Mm -hmm. And uh, what, in terms of them signing uh, with re their representative, their agents, for an example, mm -hmm. how much are they getting out of these issues yes. of the image right? yes because yeah. sometimes some of the players they just uh, when they sign with clubs they'll tell you clubs will tell you that we have signing maybe they they, they they give you a signing on fee mm. they say signing on fee first year you get two hundred thousand you get that signing on fee and you know what you're doing you're signing your rights away to this club mm. fire will tell you we had some discussion and a fight with issues of apparatus playing boots Mm. where players uh, and clubs would not allow players to wear the boots of their own choice because that's where most people make money as a football. Mm. When you are wearing a different brand, mm. you wear that different brand and you make money out of it. But clubs would say, no, with us we are using this brand mm. and no one is allowed to come with the other brand. But therefore you are losing. So whatever the money that you get, it would seem like they would have negotiated a deal, a package that includes the boots to say, no, don't worry. Fire will wear a Nike, for an example. Mm. And fire wearing this brand or these other wearing Puma, this other Umbro. But this is what this person will be wearing. Mm. So you can, as a fire, go and uh, get maybe Puma somewhere simply because uh, in that contract, you are included, but you don't even know that you are included. So that issue becomes very, very important for us to sit down and say, uh, how do we then deal with uh, that issues of uh, a, a minimum wage? I think those are, I don't know which other points, which I'm forgetting, the, the three issues that you have raised. The issue of insurance. The insurance issue yeah. to say, 
one of the things also is that the members must also, we would want them to take extra air cover. But of course we have a discussion which is still continuing and I think it's still going to continue and continue where mm. we think and we strongly believe that the insurance as it is done is mm. such that when players there's a terminal injury what happens a player will get 50 the club will get 50 and then as they'll be told that is because the clubs are paying premiums on behalf of the player mm. uh, through the league and so forth and all that. so all those discussions need to take place to say Holistically, when you bring the insurance, you bring the uh, image rights, you bring the minimum wage, you bring the uh, issue of sponsorship, you know, you bring government to be central in terms of running this. How does it then help and assist to make sure that all these things happen? Because the difference is that when you look at the league, mm -hmm. uh, remember now we are different in South Africa, that mm -hmm. the league is independent uh, of the uh, association. So yeah. in other countries, the associations run the league. Mm. They run those leagues, mm. as it were. So the decision, they get the money there, then that money is direct. So they, they are able to really uh, decide on what needs to happen. Yeah, I fully agree that there's a whole lot of things that needs to uh, be done for mm. us to be able to push towards uh, one direction in saying how do we then get these players to be able to do that but what's fundamental and the heart of that becomes the issue of education which we have just asked in terms of the transition mm -hmm. to say when you have a transition that was uh, launched by the league uh, with Gibbs mm -hmm. uh, what is our view the league would have, would have had the discussion with the league on this particular matter you recall that when the, the league launched it also the did confirm that, that we had discussion around this particular matter to say what needs to happen. There would have been the first uh, phase, which was a pilot, mm. what needs to, to happen. But we've raised all issues in terms of the age to say, you see in football, you can't just say you want to take between 25 and 30 or 25 and 35, you know, yeah. uh, that age group, because the reality is any professional player mm. can lose sponsor high anytime. So we really need to look and, and make sure that everybody else is uh, included. Uh, included. Mm. And uh, the clique were the first to admit actually that this would have been one of the programs that would have uh, sat down and discussed uh, with, uh, with themselves. So what we need to do is to agree in terms of what needs to be done going forward. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, as, a, as, a, as a give and take uh, for the players. But we welcome such a transition. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing it with UEFA as well, mm -hmm. uh, these uh, transition uh, courses. Because sometimes we believe that some of these things are not really tailor-made. We want things that are tailor-made. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want some things that are just generic. You know, say, no, no, come, eat that. We've got uh, tea, uh, what is this, off the pitch with TK. Yeah. Come and make a presentation mm. uh, with what you know generic. We want somebody who would have worked it, understood what the players want, been in this industry, and understand exactly what is it that needs to be done. So we think it's a very good uh, initiative. Thing, initiative in yeah. the right direction, but there should be many more. We should not close other people out. We should have a a program that you know, speaks across, uh, you know, to all age, uh, gender, and uh, religion otherwise. Yeah. No, that's true. But is there a way to monitor it? If it's been used, is it working? Is there feedback? I mean, it's been launched well, over a year now, give or take. Well, we'll get a feedback, uh, obviously. We need to get feedback in terms of what's happening. We know that we've been interacting with other players. Uh, others uh, they would have had some challenges with it. Uh, others were happy to be in the program, but we can only check it in the uh, in time to say how do we then uh, monitor and evaluate uh, yeah. this matter once it comes to an end because it's it's a it's a, it's a, it's a process. Yeah. It's a process. It's just not a, a short thing. It's, it's really a process that mm. uh, I think we need to engage. And fire your view on it. 
Yes, I think it's for, for starters, yes. Mm. One would appreciate it that the, the idea is there. I'm happy that the idea is there. Mm. Now, at least somebody somewhere has seen, and they, particularly the PSA. So, you know, if everything happens for the players, I, I, I will always appreciate it. You know, because it helps somebody. Yeah. It will help the, 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 for the future. The future uh, 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 generations will benefit better because this one is starting. So, maybe after your five years, we, people will know what to do and it will be like. Mm. You know, uh, fine tuned by then, then yeah. it will uh, uh, work wonders. But I'm just happy that at least the idea is there. Yeah. I like the idea. Great. Uh, gentlemen, I think uh, we, we can close this session here. Um, uh, provided Mr. President commits that you'll, you'll come back because I know he's pressed for time now and I'll be fair and, and release him. You have my word, uh, TK. Yeah. Uh, the organization will deal with me harshly. Yeah. If uh, I will not uh, come back here, yeah, uh, we'll come back and address all other issues. Uh, you tell me, yeah, uh, when you want me, and uh, that can be done. Unfortunately, today I have to go and attend to other we, issues. Yeah, yes. no, we, we understand, and and also I'm sure our viewers, once they've seen this session, they will also uh, indicate to us what issues they want you to address or or talk about, and and we're grateful for you making time to come and see us. And um, uh, viewers of Off the Pitch, allow me to, to close this session for now, but it's a continuous engagement. We'll, we'll have the president back and uh, we'll continue on other issues. There are a lot of issues, as, as we've mentioned. So um, uh, until we meet on the next session, uh, from me, TK, it's a bye-bye. It's